when it start to rain That mean my database is getting more information from outer space Alright, last take, take one Hey, what's up, this, I said take one, fucking guard dog Hey, what's up, this is Marlon, aka Sherlock Homie This channel, these videos are for one group of people One group of people The Sherlock Homies, if you don't have this book, this channel is not for you this video is not for you. Lifetime membership, Sherlock Homie. You need my book. The Edict of My Line. It's a, it's a journal about my thoughts and rituals every day of the year, two pages per day. Oh, you can stay if you're an affiliate too. If you're an affiliate, just send me a, a letter, send me a text, send me an email. Donate $1 in the last 30 days. You're a Sherlock affiliate. So if you're not a Sherlock Homie, you're not a Sherlock affiliate, you got a bounce partner. We don't care about views. We don't care about subscribers. We don't care about likes. We care about Sherlock homies. Until next time, people. Oh, back to this dumbass video. What's up? What's up, people? Just showing up for a uh, nice school. No me showing up. What up? This is Marlon, a.k.a. Sherlock Homeboy. Minding my business being nosy. I got time to put in them hours, man. I'm just training. I'm getting better. I just got, I just got to get better. Regardless. Regardless of who's watching. I just got to put in the time and get better. Okay, people. So what I'm doing, I was about to call it, call it a day or night, whatever time this release. I was about to not do it. And I thought, you know what? This is the perfect case. Because how I pick cases, I look at a title. I just look at the title and say, is that something you might be interested in? And uh, so with this case, this is what we're going to try to find out. Since me uh, learning about uh, how things work in justice, how the justice works in America... I must say, I'm disappointed in how slow, I just can't get, I just can't, can't take that shit. Like, almost like, everybody just accepts how slow it is. Like, it's just like, it's like the sun moving, or it's like the moon, the sun, and gravity, or whatever. It's just mandatory. Like, you have to, just the way it is. That is not a natural rule. We can do better. We can, we can do better. So I just don't like the status quo being accepted. So I must apply pressure and, and see, am I, am I just naive to what it takes to actually send somebody to jail? So with this one, I said this is a perfect case. Let me, uh, let me step back. And what I'm trying to see is, this said they found the body in 2016. So I'm about to watch this and find out, like, hey, man, did some new information come to this case? Or with better police work and more effort, it could have been solved a long time ago and somebody could have made a rest. I just don't like, like, for instance, in the, uh, keep thinking about the West Boys, still no more information. But this telling me, even if you they found the bodies of, body of whoever or whenever, it might be four years before they even make an arrest. And not to say, and that's kind of normal. That's kind of normal, like as in... Murderers get vacations. You get seems like built into the American dream. It's a one or two year vacation before you go to jail for uh, your crimes. So I'm about to really look at this case and say, was this new information or could this have happened? Could they have made arrests quicker just to see what's up with this system that moves so fucking slow? Let's go. On the docket tonight, a murder that uh, took place on a college campus out in California. Ted Rollins, Court TV anchor, has the story for us. All kinds of little certificates for him. Using her phone, Jennifer Kimberly shows off the wall she created in her son's bedroom with artwork and photos. Kirk Kimberly was just 18 when he was murdered in hey. Northern California hey. in 2016. The last time Jennifer saw her son was the morning of October. Hey, do look like Mac Miller a little bit. 17th, he left on his bike to go meet a friend. I sent him a text around three o'clock asking him, just touching bases, and he didn't respond. And then I sent him one at five o'clock, and he didn't respond. And then when my husband came home, I told my husband I was worried because he didn't respond. The next day, flyers were posted asking for help to find Kirk, his bicycle, and a portable speaker he carried with him. We knew he couldn't be identified. They didn't even put to it. Look for the bike. I still haven't said his age. How old is this kid? The speaker that, that I knew those were items that he had with him. 
Two and a half weeks later, Kirk's body was found in a shallow grave on the campus of Sonoma State University. It's located near a blackberry thicket. It is relatively difficult to get to that area if you're not looking for it. Johnny Kearns is a private investigator and author who wrote a book on this case, which for more than two years remained unsolved. It was a really tricky investigation. I interviewed over 50 people who were involved in Kirk's life, from ex-girlfriends to best friends to people he went to school with, and each of them had different pieces of the puzzle that they could give to me. I'm gonna put him at uh, 16, about 16. And it really wasn't until about- He looked like a sophomore high school. Uh, six months before I completed the book, where I had the ability to see the whole picture. In his book released last year, Kearns named 19-year-old Daniel Carrillo as a prime suspect. Carrillo was arrested and charged. That's some good shit, uh, private investigator. That's the fuck I'm talking about. How can a private investigator be faster than the police? They failed. What I came here to see is, that's my, you know what? That proves what I'm saying right fucking now. Now imagine if that private eye had the resources of the cops. With Kirk's murder. He came to my house, I fed him lunch. He played video games with my son here. Carrillo was one of Kirk's friends. This is a photo of the two of them skateboarding with a group shortly before Kirk's murder. What's unclear is why Carrillo would kill his friend. This did not happen after a protracted fight. This happened quickly, and I believe Kirk was set up and didn't see it coming. Kirk's bike and speaker have never been found. Daniel Carrillo has pled not guilty. Investigators say cell phone evidence puts Carrillo at the scene of the murder. News that only adds to Jennifer's loss. I want him to know that it wasn't his choice. It, he didn't have a right to take someone else's life. I'm forever heartbroken. I'll never be the same. Kirk was gave me purpose and meaning. He was my contribution to the world. And, and Kirk didn't get a second chance. I wish, I wish I could have saved him. So incredibly tragic for that mom. I mean, anytime you do one, a story where a parent has to bury a child and, and, and now they've got to go through this whole thing. It was a cold case. Now it's allegedly solved and now there's going to be a trial. It's not going to be easy for that mom. Not at all. It's just going to get tougher and tougher. Uh, but at the end, will she get some sense of justice? I don't know. It depends how this trial goes. Let's bring in our guest tonight, okay, Jerry Hills, I'm California, saying. former federal. How can a private investigator solve the case and they come back? Then it's a cold case. And after he drop a book telling you who did it, here comes the police with the uh, with the uh, arrest. Man, 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 man. I came to check for this shit, right? And that's that's it's right there in front of your face, man. And nobody's talking about it. This status quo, how this, how the police work, and I'm not, I'm not here to bash the police because we, we were kind of like doing the same thing. I'm saying, are you guys really trying? That uh, Beverly Hills cop shit ain't gonna work no more, man. Federal prosecutor David Katz back with us. David, great to see you. Um, the question great why? To meet with you, Vinny. Yeah, the question why has not really been made public we don't know why how important do you think that will be in a case like this where the defendant is a friend of the victim for you know explaining to a jury why this happened well you know i've been uh, commenting on uh, uh, trump and Barr and everything but people love a murder mystery uh it's also a tragedy um and that's one of the things that makes this case uh difficult and fascinating uh, when I was a federal prosecutor, I prosecuted uh, someone charged with murdering the postal carrier. She was just on her rounds, and she hadn't done anything wrong. And that seems to be the situation with this young man. And, uh, of course, our hearts go out um, to the victim and to the family, and uh, nobody you know, can ever make it right. Uh, no one could ever make it right for the family that lost that uh, female postal carrier. Uh, back in my trial, you know, I convicted the defendant of first degree murder. Uh, he went to federal prison for a long time, but, uh, you know, that's cold comfort 
to someone like this family who lost uh, what seems like a wonderful young man. Now, in terms of the accused, this has so far happened in juvenile court. And as you know, Vinny, it's very difficult to get records out of juvenile court. Now that I'm a criminal defense attorney, I had a case about a year or two out here, uh, and my client was in a juvenile court. Um, and, you know, the whole record ends up getting sealed, you know, at the end. And unless you apply to the military or you apply to civilian law enforcement, uh, your record remains sealed, you know, basically for the rest of your life. Um, one of the problems, though, for the media and for the intense interest in a case like this is it's very hard to find out these nuggets of information. A few things have leaked. We know that the accused was already in juvenile custody. Uh, we assume for some kind of offense. I won't speculate, but there has been some speculation what that offense was. But, you know, the accused may have the defense in this case that uh, I didn't do it. I don't know what they're talking about. Supposedly, his cell phone records put him near the site. And as your report said, the site is somewhat remote, although it's near the college campus. Um, and, uh, and his defense may be that, uh, you know, when I last saw him, he was alive. We had a good time. We told a joke and, and I left. And whatever happened to him minutes or hours or whatever later, uh, I didn't do it. His defense may also be that it was some kind of a mutual combat situation, right? That they fought over something and that this really was self-defense. And of course, the body uh, was there for over two weeks before it was discovered. So it may be more difficult to fix the time of death, Vinny, or to figure out exactly, um, you know, what the um, what the wounds were, what the situation was. Were they consistent with a mutual combat situation? But they're saying that the autopsy has shown that there were multiple stab wounds in the victim. And if it were self-defense, you would think, okay, maybe you would stab the person once in self-defense, multiple stab wounds. That seems inconsistent with self-defense, but there's so much about this case uh, that we don't know. We don't know yet, but if and when it goes up to adult court and they open up some more of the information, of course, uh, we'll have that for you. We'll continue to track it. David Katz, joining us from Beverly Hills tonight. Thanks so much, sir. Appreciate it. The only one, the only thing that would make sense is the, uh, the go way out there that would make sense is a drug deal. Look like the police dropped the ball on this one. Information below. I'm out. People, another dumb video in the book. That stupid shit. This is supposed to be my commercial. Check out my book, The Edict of My Line, available everywhere you buy books. If you get if you get my book from me, The Edict of My Line, from the merch store, it's 25% cheaper and it's always signed. Thanks for your support. And this channel sucks ass. <laughs> Oh, hey Sherlock, it's me, Marlon, your sponsor. I'm just here to tell you, nobody's supporting you, nobody sends donations. But think about not renew your contract. Have a nice day, fuckhead. <laughs> Fuck you, Sherlock.